Well, hello and welcome to Indo World Cup Daily. I'm Sinead Kassan. And as you can see, Dave Kelly is there in Brisbane for us. We're going to be with you right through Ireland's run through the FIFA Women's World Cup, which of course starts uh, today week against the co-host Australia in Sydney. Dave, you are making us very jealous there. Uh, it's not a bad view behind you. It's it's not too shabby, Sinead. Yeah, a couple of more hours of uh, sunlight left here. I've hopped over to a neighbour's um, balcony for a, a cup of tea. And um, yeah, the Brisbane River is nice and calm. And the, you can see the South Bank, all the business district over there, the tall buildings and the university district is over this side. And um, a lot of the kind of cool restaurants. I saw people, uh, the public swimming pool, families uh, out swimming and um, a few low-flying ibis little squawking birds and you're, you're you're warned that they might swoop down but they're not as dangerous as Dublin seagulls I can report uh, so no no casualties yet uh, so come here um, the most important question since you landed there have you got any bit of sleep yet? No the jet lag is still an issue um, I think after about a couple of days of um, uh, torturous flying as I reported yesterday and aborted uh, take off in Dubai um just the four hours uh, last night, but um, managed to get a lot of work in. Never, never, never waste uh, hours when you're trying to fight jet lag. So um, I'm going to try and get through this day and it should be OK. I think four hours for someone of my vintage is about average anyway. So I'll get through. <laughs> and um, so you your piece is in the Irish Independent this morning and obviously online you wrote about uh the, obviously the some of the protests that are going on in terms of sorry payments uh, with the other nations obviously every pair, player is going to receive a minimum of 27,000 from FIFA but there's other talks going on in terms of bonuses with other federations and also you had a piece with Lucy Quinn as well yeah well I just, I just thought it was interesting that um I mean if you look through it in depth, which we won't hear, but I mean, I, I, I reckon about half of the nations in this World Cup have, within the last decade, have, have had some protests, including Ireland's, of course, famously in Liberty Hall in 2017 and their subsequent uh, battle for equal pay. But um, England are embroiled in a bit of a, a bother at the moment about uh, uh, bonuses that they were expecting on top of the FIBA payment. As we know, uh, all players will get about at least €28,000 um, for participating in the group stage, and then that rises gradually thereafter. Uh, England are expecting more. Nigeria are in a bit of a bother, but they're always in a bit of a bother um, uh, historically. Um, and obviously we play them in round three, uh, the third game in group uh, in the Group B. And, and like Vera, I was asked about it yesterday and I, I, I said, are you kind of hoping that they still be in a bit of bother? And she says, from her experience, obviously she, she coached South Africa in the Olympics Um in 2016, I think it was, and, and she says there's a lot of troubles in African nations. They're, they're kind of used to this almost. It's a constant battle, and it's a constant battle, as you know, in women's in women's football. It's almost a protest movement in itself. Um, and th the case with Ireland is that they had their uh, negotiations with their representative, Kira Medler, who was involved in that equal pay with Katie McCabe and Seamus Coleman. Uh, they've come to some sort of arrangement, which is a fraction of what FIFA are, are, are giving them, but they're they are happy with that well out, months out. So it's just more the, 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 the you know, the, the, the presence of mind that everyone has now that the focus is on the job and there's no no bickering on going on in the background. Um, so that's the uh, story with that. So it's actually not really a story as such. It's more that it's just one thing that's not on the table. Yeah, yeah, we, we, yeah. And you were at the uh, open training session yesterday uh, in Brisbane and we were talking to you um through that in the middle of that training session and obviously you gave the good news about Katie McCabe and her ankle injury obviously she came off uh, last week during the friendly with France in Tala all good there and everybody kind of came through that training session at the end Dave yeah pretty much I mean um, yeah, the training session was good it was about uh, you know 100 people there a few kind of you know first second generation Irish a few debits from from Claire I think they were a couple of lynches and yeah it was nice and a few babies there Katie McCabe got to hold a couple of babies. Sinead Farley, who was holding a baby nearly every day since she's uh, arrived over to this neck of the woods from um, coming into camp. Uh, but yeah, it was all good. Abby Larkin got a kind of bang during a training drill. Um, and I think it was just a, a minor, it wasn't even a flesh wound. I thought it was blood because she went off with a towel pressed her against her head. But I, I, I met her uh, heading out and I said, 
how's the how's the head? How's the head head? And she was like, oh, grand. I said, oh, you're a drama queen. And she's, I'm always a drama queen. You know, typical Abby, like, not a, not a bother in the world. So everybody's okay, like, and, you know, without banging on too much about it. I mean, Vera Pau is big into the periodization, which mm. Emma Hayes has won multiple titles with Chelsea using. And, and um, uh, Yui Van Hal used to use it as well. I mean, it, it, all our players are in peak condition at the moment um, in terms of injury-free I'd argue that fitness, based on on the second half of France, especially, will will hopefully get a chance to have a look tomorrow against them, um, uh, Colombia in a in a behind doors doors game. Um, because fitness is going to be a really big thing the way they play and the way they don't have the ball. So we'll see how that goes. And um, yeah, we spoke to a few players as well as some nice interviews and you know because all the stories are individual. Some we've heard before. I mean, we're, but Lucy Quinn we spoke to and that's in the Independent today. I mean. Her story again is well known, but her recent story is kind of dramatic in terms of she was left out of the um, USA camp originally. Yeah. Lily Ag, um, who hasn't played in quite a while actually herself uh, until the week uh, until last week, um, and then Lucy was brought in and was uh, player of the match in the second game. Uh, really not a better performance in the first uh, collective performance, but you know she did really really well. I mean, uh, a girl who. When she eventually qualified for Ireland, and scored that. Well, she didn't score the free kick. She's claiming it, but that kind of free kick that was deflected against, you know, who Australia uh, back in 2021 when Ireland ended a long one, beating their their worst unbeaten, their worst losing streak ever in their history, and they beat Australia. Um, that's kind of a nice thing to have, and you know, she's carrying that into um, into next Thursday. So yeah, I mean, they're all just like getting over jet lag and just kind of building up towards. Um, the match time and tomorrow night is kind of like almost you know, you know another big stepping stone. It's an eight o'clock game, unlimited substitutions, and it'll just be uh, you know a real kind of dress rehearsal in terms of just the mood music of trying to get into a game mode um, ahead of Thursday because it's like it's a long long time away, but it's very close. Yeah, so this is obviously the the game against Colombia behind closed doors. Um, do, why is it behind closed doors? Because obviously France are playing uh, Australia in Melbourne, and that's got to quote that. Any particular reason for this one being behind closed yeah, doors? Yeah, well, I mean, Ireland have obviously had like um, a couple of major friendlies, and they've played uh, the US twice on a US tour. I mean, Australia haven't played in three months together, so um, they have been going around Australia uh, doing a few sessions and stuff. But this is like their real chance to kind of you know, show themselves off to the public. There's 30,000 sellout in Melbourne. Um, Ireland have had their friendlies. They've had their official kind of... Zambia was obviously the squad audition and then France was the farewell friendly. Didn't go well, obviously, uh, in terms of the results and probably half the performance is pretty poor. Um, tomorrow was effectively uh, an elongated training session. Um, we're not quite sure how it works. It'll be... It, 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 20, 23 players probably will get a, a run out. I'm not sure if all three goalkeepers, but maybe they will. She 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 really wants to use every single player um, just to get get them on the pitch in a, in a, in a kind of match situation. I mean, it's uncapped. It's the fact it's unlimited subs means it's not. It was never going to be an official friendly, and yeah. she was always going to set something up, whether it was against the local boys team or um, you know a local league team or something. So it just happened that Colombia were were available to. Um, to participate in it so it's kind of worked out well yeah because we saw that uh, you know uh, the confusion towards the end of the friendly against France and Tala last week when and Amber Barr looked like she was coming on and then she couldn't and there was a bit of confusion there and you know Amber did look really pissed off that she didn't get any game time so she will you know look to get a bit more of that tomorrow yeah yeah I think that yeah, was to do with the segments and which yeah. you can make subs and all that so yeah be like there's basically um like it's not like um you know a blind Cody took any hurling session like there's no kind of drop, uh, swallowing the whistle and it's, it's 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 all systems go all systems are off and all bets are off I mean it's going to be controlled kind of stuff um uh, like there'll be an official referee and everything but like it's just it's just really a, a, a chance for both teams to kind of limber up more effectively in a different kind of way and get a kind of and get into their combat kind of zones because you know the um the 11 are are, are are effective enough but i mean like if you saw yesterday i mean she basically like we know the first 11 and um, possibly ag little john is, is a query but like the first 11 is the first 11 i mean that's set in stone 
and it will be that. Um, I'm guessing starting tomorrow, and then she'll probably just taper players coming on and off in terms of who needs minutes or who she wants to kind of protect or just kind of combinations or maybe even first substitution she'll make during the game. But um, like, so there's no there's no great secret to what's what's going to go on, and even. Like, you know, the game tomorrow will be uploaded anyway, so everyone else will see it uh, who are involved in the World Cup, the participating na nations. Like, every game is out there. So, you know, it's, it's, not, it's, not, it's not 10 years ago when, you know, people could kind of just come in off the radar. Like, everybody knows everything. Yeah, and of course, we will get uh, a real indication tomorrow of where, well, some indication of where Australia are at when they play uh, France in Melbourne. We saw the class of France last week in Tala. So what are we expecting from Australia? And their, it, this is their final, obviously, World Cup warm-up game. Yeah, as I said, and, uh, they haven't played one like um, uh, in a few months. I mean, like, like France, given what we you know, saw of them last week, I mean, they would be more of a possession based team I would guess uh, facing Australia so Australia it'd probably be more of a counter-attacking approach um, and I mean they have kind of under good staff so they have kind of moderated their game a little in the last kind of 12 months in terms of a more kind of a more kind of pressing game um, which I think they'll, they'll obviously employ against Ireland um, now not that we'll be in possession that much but they'll be really kind of front foot whereas T tomorrow, I think they might just adopt maybe different tactics that they might say later in the competition. Um, and like, the interesting thing for them is that like they have Caitlin Ford has basically come in from the wing to kind of it's a four four two. Doesn't always look like it. I mean, she comes in behind Sam Kerr and like is a bit more supportive. I mean, she's. I know they haven't played in the last three months, but like I think she's six or seven goals in six games since making that switch, and she links up really well with 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 Sam Kerr. I mean, they don't play together at club level. I mean, Caitlin's Arsenal, Sam's Chelsea, but they just seem to to link up very well. Um, and then they have, you know, uh, Kate the uh, the overlapping fullback, um, and. Um, is it Car yeah, Carpenter? Yeah, Steph Catley. And, um, and they've a lot of, like with Hope and Rayso uh, on the wing, on the wings as well. Like they do just, they have a lot of avenues of attack. Um, so it'll be really, really interesting to see kind of how they, how they go tomorrow night. Like there'll be almost more interest from us really in terms of looking at them because, yeah. you know, we haven't seen them. Uh, I haven't seen them live since 21 against Ireland. Um, in the flesh either um, and we kind of know what Ireland are going to produce tomorrow night we know what the, the game plan is going to be we know what the style is going to be um, it's just going to do it better for longer um, whereas you know Australia um, it'll just be the, the, in terms of cohesion as opposed to style because obviously it's going to be a different game against Ireland um, but yeah it'll be it'll be interesting to see how they how they perform you know and then, you know there'll be pressure on them I mean the you know, they're, they're the hosts and everyone's expecting them to do really big things in this World Cup. Okay, nice one, Dave. Uh, hope you get more sleep tonight in Brisbane. Thanks for that. Yeah, I'll do my best. Cheers.